Okay, so it's been like a week since I installed these. I still haven't planted them out with anything yet. Uh, I haven't seen any leaks or issues or anything like that yet. And I do like the way this system's set up better now. Like I can just turn my pump off and then when I'm ready to turn it back on, I turn it back on and I don't have to bleed my system anymore like I used to. Uh, I just have all my valving all the way open. Uh, I did try turning that off and opening this one all the way. And yeah, sure, this right here can handle the flow. The pipe can handle the flow to keep up with the water that's coming into this barrel up here. But this, this could not. So I have to turn off the pump whenever I'm working on the, on this half of the system. Uh, what I wanted to show is now that they got better sunlight out here than we did on that last section of the video, is uh, you can see that I wanted the water in the net cups to be about, I don't know, midway through the cups, like about like that. And it is obviously not on this upper one. You can see all the way down, it's pretty well at the top of it. And on the bottom half though, however, I don't know if that's showing up in the video or not. My camera can focus on it. On the lower half, it's just fine. Uh, so the drain is set the same on both ends. So the only thing I can think of is uh, when the water's coming through here, it's running it's draining into the water there. It's creating some back pressure, which makes this top half have a little bit higher of a water level than that lower half. So the only way I could think of if I wanted to correct that is there's a few ways is I could add another second exhaust to drop it down here on this end. This end doesn't need a second one to drain it out though. Cause there is no back pressure back here. Um, or I could uh, add a larger section right here, like have a upsize connector piece right there. Or I could come back and if I wanted to really cheap out, because these right here were a lot more expensive than those smaller connectors. These were like six bucks a pop. I'm glad I went with a larger size now. Um, but you could just like get a piece of PVC, like the little cheap connectors like this, and put it in there and just glue it in there. And it obviously would be way, way cheaper. Um, I just wanted to do that for adjustability purposes because I don't know if I'm going to move these later or not. <clears throat> but uh, what I'm thinking is, like right now, these guys probably have about 200 gallons of, and it was water an hour flowing through there. So you can see there's water move, oh, there's water moving all the way through there. It's pretty, pretty aggressive. Um, obviously, they could handle. They probably do a lot better with a lot less water. Here, actually, I'll turn off the water flow. I'll turn off, I'll turn off the pump so I don't overflow it. Let's see what this. Let's see what the water level goes down to in the water. Yeah, see, it's already starting to drop. So if I had, uh, like, say, half the water flow, it would probably be pretty good in there. If I had half the water flow, it'd be a good level. So I might end up uh, splitting that off, like right up here somewhere, and having setting up another one of these, like six foot long, going along this wall here in the greenhouse. Let me back up so you can see it better have it going along this wall here in the greenhouse and then draining into this bed and then having that, that water going to that bed. Uh, I might end up doing that here later on. Uh, everything looks like it's doing pretty good in here. <coughs> uh, what I'm going to try to do though first is, that'll probably be later on down the road since it's obviously able to handle this for now. Let me open this back up. Turn it back on. Alright, pumps back on. Anyways, uh, I'm going to try to clone some, since this, it's starting to be fall time here. So obviously I put my greenhouse back together. And instead of using this cheap PVC, I use a twin wall polycarbonate. This one's actually quarter inch thick, so believe it or not, my wall is actually thicker than my roof now. Uh, so that'll last a long time. I actually had to come back back through, and since it was, it was set up for this thin single piece of plastic, I went through and like, there's little channels along there. I just pried them open all the way around and then I was able to pop these in there. And then I had to cut off the top section. That's for another video. So what I was going to do is I'm going to go through and uh, 
I'm gonna try to clone some plants that they're here and probably see if I can dig up some strawberry crowns from the yard. That's different places out in the yard and put some more strawberries in here too. I'm thinking I'm gonna do goji berries because those are extremely expensive plants and I only have two of them. And I heard they make fruit from like early summer all the way to fall and they get big. And I also wanna do some of the black everberry mulberries I have. Uh, this particular variety is dwarf, so it'll only turn into a, a large bush if you let it go that far. And it makes multiple crops of, of black mulberries every year, which black mulberries are the most flavorful varieties. These aren't the Persian mulberries, which are probably the most flavorful, but they, uh, they're they supposed to end up being pretty good. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Uh, here's a quick, real quick way uh, you can use these uh, these different little baskets and different types of ways you can grow things in them. Uh, you can basically get them with these little black caps on them, which I'm going to put the black caps on every single one of these that I'm not growing something in because it's going to keep the algae out of there, keep that sunlight out of the tube. But uh, if not, the algae would have a chance of being too much of an issue down in here. Uh, I like all, especially on like these end ones. Uh, because if I grow like say something that's longer term, it's gonna get bigger roots like strawberries or lettuce, it's probably gonna clog up that drain, but that would be perfectly fine for cloning a small tree and transplanting it though. Uh, same thing for that back one back there. Actually, that one right there is the inlet, so that doesn't really matter too much. It's this exhaust one here that matters. Uh, so you can use the, uh, you can wedge something down in there and the little, little slips in the way these things open. You pinch it down in there and you slide it down in the cap. Another thing right here is uh, this uh, rock wool, which is volcanic rock. Looks like wool, kind of feels like wool too. Uh, that's commonly used for uh, cloning things or growing things. Uh, and then another thing is these uh, Jiffy peat pellets. Uh, this little box right here has 36 of them. Bones ringing, of course. All right, so these, uh, these are just uh, compacted peat moss pellets that are dried out. You can actually take these, soak them in water, and they'll swell up to about, about yay tall. And you can plant them in a, plant them out with lettuce in a, in a tray somewhere in the house or something. And then as soon as you, if you're doing it this way, you can, as soon as you pull your other heads of lettuce out, you can turn around and pop in a new one. And immediately uh, you have a couple of week head start rather than just starting from seed. Uh, and this is about what they look like. I already have one in here soaking. Still not fully stretched out here. I'll go ahead and force it to stretch out. That's about what they look like when they're fully expanded. So this is the small ones. They come in different sizes. Uh, the small one fits in here pretty good. And if you get the water level right in there, then it would fit just right so that the plant's roots won't drown. Another thing, option that you can do, since my water is a little bit too deep in this one, is you can stack them. You can stack these cups to adjust the water level. So that's another option. Got my pipe dirty. All right, so I'm gonna go get some clones throughout, things to clone throughout the yard and uh, stick them in the system. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So here, all right, so here's a super micro crown I just found out there. It's an everbearing type of strawberry. It has like, some root spurs on it. You can see, still see the stem right here where it just came off the mother plant. It's just sending out some roots. I managed to get a lot of the roots off. I rinsed them off. And I'm gonna wedge them into one of the wedges. Uh, I know uh, strawberry root crowns like to stay dry, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to wedge it to where just the roots are underneath that thing, and that way the crown can keep growing out. Let's we'll see how this works out. Here's a good view on another one. Uh, I expect most of these leaves to grow back since I just cut it off its mother plant. This one really only has a few roots, but as you can see, the just the roots are coming below the black piece there and then the crown's all above it. Alright, here it is fully planted out. I got a, a sweet life goji berry, strawberry, strawberry, another strawberry, sweet life goji, mulberry, 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 goji, goji, strawberry. Uh, this strawberry plant didn't actually have any roots on it yet but it's starting to make a crown so I pulled this out to give it some air and because I had to put the whole crown down in there to get it to touch the water so hopefully it'll it'll shoot out some roots and survive. Later on I'll move it back up. 
and then we'll see how that works out. All right, um, we'll check up in a few weeks and see how this all looks. And I don't know if you guys actually saw uh, my last video of that fig tree when I was trying to get it out of here yet, but uh, if you if you watched that video, you saw how much of a pain it was for me to get it out of that gravel, and I had to tear off most of the roots. Uh, bonus of another bonus of cloning stuff and stuff like that in a just water substrate like this is I can just I can pull it out like it's nothing uh, just shortly after it gets a good amount of roots and transplant it into either the ground or a container or whatever I want and then uh, I don't have to tear apart my bed and worry about re-salvaging all my gravel out of the roots and all that stuff it'll have a, hopefully a nice healthy root system and everything Alright, stay tuned till next month. I'll see you later.